Hi, I'm Troy, and you're watching Troy Tube. One of the earlier videos that I did was how to create a shadow layer for a font in Inkscape and then bring that into Design Space to cut it. And so I'm going to update that video with some more information and uh, kind of redo it and give you a, an alternative way to do this. Um, but uh, one of the Things, one of the features that the design space unfortunately does not currently have is the ability to do a shadow layer on fonts or any other object. Now some fonts have a shadow layer built in and they're, it's hidden so you just have to unhide it but you still can adjust the uh, width of the shadow layer and, um, and things like that and like I said you can't add shadow layers to other fonts or objects that you might want to add a layer to. So there's two primary ways that you can do this that uh, I think most people use. One is to use Inkscape, which is a free vector editing program. That's the one I'm going to show you in this video. The other is to use uh, Shortcuts A Lot 4. Uh, I have another video on my channel that shows you exactly how to add shadow layers with uh, Shortcuts A Lot 4. And I'll put the link right here to that one if you want to stop and go watch that video real quick. But this time we're going to talk a little bit about why you use a shadow layer too. So I have a couple bottles and a, and a tumbler here with me that uh, bought these at Dollar Tree. So they have the stripes in the chevron pattern, so it's kind of broken up uh, look. And then I have this tumbler that is, uh, as you can see there, it has these beads in it. And this is one of those tumblers you put in the freezer and uh, keeps your drink cold. And I bought that at uh, Deals, which is a Dollar Tree brand, it's like three bucks. And so if you were to put a uh, solid color vinyl on these objects, uh, it would it might be make it tough to see depending on what colors you use. For example, I might want to go ahead and use royal blue on this, but putting blue on top of these stripes, it's not going to look very good. And so a shadow layer is also something that is used quite often in the screen printing -ish, uh, industry on a shirt where they put a layer of white underneath uh, whatever the print design is to kind of make it stand out and pop just a little bit and make it a little bit more visually appealing, uh, especially on dark clothing. So I'm going to switch over to the computer and show you how to do this with Inkscape and then I'll cut the design and come back and show you how to apply it and what, it's going to, what the final product is going to look like. Okay, so in Inkscape what we'll do is insert some text and we'll use our text tool and we'll type a name and then I'll hold control and shift while I grab the corner and adjust it and that'll keep a perspective of length uh, versus uh, height. And so we'll change this font by double clicking in the text box and highlighting it. And I'm gonna switch to uh, just something real basic, Arial Black. And now the next thing we wanna do, as it sits, this is not a path. Now remember, Everything in Design Space needs to be a path in order for it to cut. And you can think of that as the path that the blade moves along. It's kind of like a road. So what we're going to do is select the text and we're going to click Path, Object to Path. And if I go to my note editor, you'll notice now I can click on let each letter and see the notes. But these letters are separate objects that are grouped at this point. And I want them to be one object. This is the, usually the best way to do this so that when you import it into Design Space, it's going to be one layer. So I'm going to first go to Object Ungroup. And as you see, they are separate letters. And next, I'm going to go to Path Union. And that will do the same thing as Weld in Design Space and makes them one layer. Now with my text selected, or my object selected, it's no longer a font. Remember, it's no longer text, but it is a uh, an object now that is a path. I'm going to go to Path, Length Offset. And I'm going to go down here and just choose a different color. I'm going to choose red for this purpose just so you can see it easy. And you see this little node here. And I'm going to grab that with my mouse and drag it out. And that's going to create our shadow layer. And if I go back to my selection tool, uh, one of the things I'll show you is that is still a linked offset. So in other words, if I were to gra use my node editor and grab one of my letters and adjust it, you notice that it follows wherever I drag it. And that is because they are linked layers. So what I'm going to do next is select my shadow layer and again go to path, object to path, and that changes it to a path. And now if I click my node editor, 
and I click on each one, you see I can see there are two different layers. And if I grab my mouse, my selector tool, I can even drag that off and see it. And one of the things I like to do sometimes is to get rid of little tiny cuts. So I'm going to go to my node editor and I'm going to highlight that little hole in the middle of the A. And you notice there's some extra ones up here. I'm going to get rid of those as well. And now I can position that. And I'm ready to save my layers. The colors don't really matter so much because you're going to uh, decide which colors you're going to cut in your material, such as vinyl anyway. So I, a lot of times I just leave these colors, whatever they are on the screen, it doesn't matter to me. We're going to save this as a plain SVG file. And I'll switch over to Design Space. And now I'm going to upload the SVG file that I just created. I'll save it. And I'll insert it into my project. Now I'll make sure it's the right size, and I think that looks okay. We're at about an inch and a half tall in those letters, so I think that will work nicely for uh, this demonstration anyway. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and change the color of the layers so I could see them on the screen just like I want to cut them. And so I'm going to cut the white layer as the shadow and blue as the top layer. So I'm going to click go and I'll switch over to the camera and we'll finish the project. So I've already have my vinyl on my mat and I'm going to click go. And of course my cricket is set on the vinyl setting at 12 o'clock noon. And we'll load the mat and go ahead and cut. Now the cut's finished, so we'll go ahead and unload the mat. Now we'll go ahead and cut the white shadow layer. Now we'll go ahead and unload and weed the project, and I'll show you how to apply the vinyl. So now we have our cuts and we'll weed these. Now I like to use an X-Acto knife to weed and uh, with the sharp edge down I just kind of hook under the vinyl like that and pull it up. It seems to work a lot smoother than the actual weeding tools for me. And it's very sharp so you can get in there and get those little tiny areas like that. And when I weed, a lot of times when I have letters like this, these are pretty simple uh, to weed, but uh, some of the script fonts are a little bit more difficult. So what I'll do is I'll actually pull it back and forth like this as I go. And I do it backwards and kind of up against the bottom of the letters. It seems like uh, more of the cuts are out of the bottom of the letters. I'm using main tape as my transfer tape. I have another video in my uh, vinyl crafting playlist that talks about different types of transfer tape. So what I'll do is apply the first layer and don't want it on the seam there. I'll turn it around a little bit. And I can usually eyeball most of these things and apply them pretty straight uh, just by looking at them. So now I'll apply the top layer. And when you're layering vinyl like this, it's important to use a clear transfer tape so you can see where you're at. And another tip I always use is I use a larger piece than what I really need. That way I can hold it out here and I'm not blocking any of my view. When you're applying to something round, I always go down the center of the round part and then work my way to the edges in each direction. And then when I remove the transfer tape, I roll it back like that real hard so that it doesn't pull the vinyl away. So there you see um, 
is a much uh, brighter uh, color with that shadow layer. It stands out against that broken pattern. So uh, that's a good example of a place you want to use shadow fonts. Of course, you can use them just about anywhere on any solid surface. Uh, it makes it stand out well. Um, also, but especially when you have these broken patterns like this, I really recommend using a shadow font. So hopefully that's been helpful to you. If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.